that's something when you get to the when you get to the end of what you're going through, that's when you should have the completed puzzle. And then you can say, okay, I went through all of this for this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so tonight I kind of want to deal with what we need to do in times like these in times like these when people are losing their jobs when people are losing their loved ones when people are committing suicide when people are being killed by the police when when buildings are falling down and and there's no good reason for the building to fall but all of a sudden the foundation ain't sure no more in times like these when people are dealing with mental illnesses when in times like these when we're in the middle of a pandemic what do you do in times like these they say tie a knot and hold on they say make sure your anchor hold that, 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 that there's a song that, 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 that back in the days they say in times like these we need a savior in times like these we need an anchor be sure be very sure your anchor holds and it grips the solid rock. And then it said what the solid rock is? That solid rock is Jesus. He's the only one. His name is Jesus. He's God's son. Be very sure. Be very yeah. sure your anchor holds and it grips the solid rock. See, sometimes we, we get in the middle of these tests and in the middle of these trials and we, we let go of the anchor because it looks like he not moving fast enough. It looks like he is, has forsaken you. It looks like you're in this thing by yourself and that, 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 that there's no way out, but be sure. Be very yeah. sure. Your mm -hmm. anchor holds and it grips the solid rock. Well, let's 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 go to the word. Let's go to the word. I I I I need somebody that's looking at my screen that will read for me. I need somebody to read for me. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Uh -oh. uh -huh. Prosecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. We are troubled mm -hmm. on every side. There's something going on all around you. There's something that would take your attention away from God. There's something that would make your heart faint in God. There's something that might make you want to walk away from God. There's some things that happen around you that might make you think that there is no God. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't act like you ain't never been there when you had to say, God, where are you? Are you real? Yeah. If you're real, why am I going through this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Traveled on every side. Yes. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but we're not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. What you mean that his life might be made manifest? Well, let's talk about his life being made manifest in you. Uh -huh. Well, Jesus suffered. He, 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 he was spat on. He was stripped. He had a crown of thorns. He had nails. He was given vinegar. He, he was mistreated. He was pierced in his side. They said he was beat with 39 stripes that you might be healed. Uh -huh. And he says, arm yourself likewise. I suffered. He said, I suffered. Uh -huh. And if I suffered and you want to be a, a, a brother to me or if you want to be my sibling, guess what? 
Mm. You're going to have to go through some stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to endure some stuff. You're going to have to understand that this is not a cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. See, somebody somebody gave you a false conception that once you get saved or once you give your life to Christ, that everything is going to be coming up roses. I want mm -hmm. you to know they lied to you. Mm -hmm. I want you to know they told you the best lie they could ever tell. Mm -hmm. Because when you tell God yes and you tell him yes for real, that is the beginning of a different kind of lifestyle. That's the telling yourself no, because he said deny yourself when daily. Take up your cross and follow him. I, I, I can't take up my cross just on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Sundays or, 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 or Wednesdays and Saturdays. I got to take it up every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. And I got to oh, follow God. him when daily. I got to make daily. up my mind that today I'm not going nowhere. Today I'm going to be better than I was yesterday. Today I'm not going to lie like I lied the day before. Today. And if you come short. My God. He's an advocator. He will advocate for you. He'll go to God and he'll go to bat for you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Some of y'all don't understand that, that he's a battle axe in the time of a battle, that he's a yes, shelter he in the time of a storm. He's your refuge yeah. and he's your fortress. Somebody don't understand that, that when you seem not to have any kind of hope, when your faith is tried on every side, <laughs> that he's yet a faithful God. In his faithfulness, in his faithfulness, he makes the decision that I'm going to come through for you. I'm going to bring you through and I'm going to see you through and I'm going to show you my salvation and I'm going to show you that I'm a righteous God and I'm going to show you that I'm a lily in the valley. I'm going to show you that I'm the rose of Sharon. I'm going to show you that I'm the bright and morning star. It might be dark in your life right now because you're going through some things but he is a light that shine in darkness and he's an ever present light he's my God in Jesus name he don't ever leave us and he don't forsake us persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed always going through something in this body that would represent the dying of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because see, you can't live in the flesh and walk in the spirit. Come on, somebody, and know that that's the truth. Yes. You got to die to the skin that you're in. Your flesh has to come under subjection so that when you're walking with God, that God can get glory from your going through. But if you don't ever give him the opportunity to be glorified by your dying to your flesh, dying to the things that would take you out of the will of God, dying to the things that would keep you from being able to think on the goodness of Jesus, because the enemy comes to attack the mind. And when he comes to attack your mind, he comes to make you doubt the very presence and the very essence of the God that we serve. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Read, read for me. I'm going to step away from the screen just so I can get the screaming child and, 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 and somebody read. I'll be right back. Tr Trouble. Beast by problems are conflict or conflict. Oh, somebody. Oh, somebody. Good understanding. I don't know if somebody read. I couldn't hear you. Good understanding. Trouble to be set by problems or conflict, and so when you see the word "beset," you say, "I don't know what that means." Well, to be set is 
of a problem or difficulty, trouble or threatened persistently. Troubled meaning threatened persistently, to be in conflict consistently, to have situations that keep arriving. How often? Persistently. They keep coming. They keep coming. They don't stop. Yeah. Troubled on every hand, on every side. Troubled, but not in distress. What distress meaning what? What does, what does distress mean? Suffering from anxiety, sorrow, or pain. What? I'm not supposed to be distressed. I got trouble. I got trouble. I, I got problems happening on every side. I got conflicts. But my resolution is this. I'm not distressed. This stuff is not going to overtake me. I, I know that these things are threatening me. They're making me feel like I'm overtaken. They make me feel like I'm defeated. I am suffering this thing. It's causing me to think more than I need to think. It's making me feel more than I need to feel. But I know. What do I know? I know I got the victory. I know that I am not going to be consumed by this suffering from anxiety and sorrow and pain. There's a brighter day coming. Well, when is that day going to come? I can't answer that. But I have hope in that God has already given me the assurance. Troubled on every side, but not in despair. I'm all right. I'm not in despair. I, I, I'm not going through this thing without knowing that I'm coming out. Okay, good understanding. Go read the next one. Perplexed. Perplexed, meaning completely baffled. Very puzzled. I'm, I'm puzzled. This thing got me in a place that makes me say, wow, what in the world is really going on? I'm, I'm puzzled because I can't read, girl. I'm sorry. It, it's okay. It's okay. That's why it gave me two good eyes. I can read. I'm, sorry, I'm, 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 sorry, I'm perplexed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm puzzled. It's okay. But not in despair. I'm not completely lost or without hope. What? I got hope. When you're in despair, you don't have no hope. You can't see that God's hand is resting. You can't see that God is moving. Because why? Because you are just perplexed. This stuff seemed like it's overtaking me. This stuff seemed like it's going to overtake me. It's got me puzzled. Why am I going through? Why did I lose my job? I come to work every day. I'm on time. I don't, I don't, I don't clock out early. I don't overstay my breaks. They kept, they kept the people that, 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 that steal money from the company, but they fired me. I, I'm, I'm baffled. I'm puzzled. Why? I, I, God, I never drank, I never smoked, and, 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 and I got cancer. But Tom over there smoked six packs of cigarettes a day. He don't got no cancer. He don't got no emphysema. He don't. Ha he not battling with nothing in his lungs. I'm lost. I'm lost. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm puzzled. I didn't read that part that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, to them that are the called according to his purpose. I wish somebody would tell me that they're getting something from what I'm saying. I wish somebody understood that, that when, when you're going through these things, he said perplexed, I am going through it, I'm puzzled, I'm baffled. But I yet have hope. I have hope that, that this stuff is just what I need. This stuff is just going to be what I need to get me to where I need to be. I'm not going to be overtaken by the, by the puzzle because the puzzle is not yet completed. Hmm. Oh, my. The puzzle not completed. And 
And so when we when we look at it and we have the understanding and we come to the realization, yeah, these things got me going. These things are making me say, God, what in the world is really going on? But you had to understand, you had, I gave us the end of it before I got to the middle of it. Why? Because sometimes you don't understand a thing until you get to the end. I got to die to me. I got to die to the way I think. I got to die to the fact that I got to stop being so easily driven by my emotion. Oh, my God. My emotions get the best of me sometimes. Yes, Good understanding. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Persecuted means subject to hostility or ill treatment because, the, because of their ethnicity, because of their religion, because of their sexual orientation or their political beliefs. Uh, they get persecuted because they believe a certain thing or they, 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 they're operating in a certain way. Persecuted. Persecuted. But I'm not, I'm not abandoned. Huh? I'm not abandoned. I'm persecuted, but I'm not deserted. I, I, I'm persecuted. I'm going through something. I'm, I'm subject to hostility. My belief is making folk want to do things to me. They're making people want to say stuff about me. They're making people want to mistreat me. But now, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get myself what together because I'm not deserted. This thing is not overtaking me. This thing is not overtaking me. There's nothing that I've gone through so great that God wasn't able to bring me through. And because God keep bringing me through, I can keep getting through, right? Because God didn't abandon me. God, he, he let these things, he let me go through these things so he can sharpen me, so that I can grow, so that I can get to a place where I'm a better Christian. Yeah. Ain't nobody ever told you that you got a nasty attitude? Mm. Ain't nobody ever told you that you were a liar and they couldn't trust you? Ain't nobody ever told you that you on your way to hell with gasoline draws on? Listen, I'm persecuted. Oh, ain't nothing to you, God, Bible-toting um, Christians. Ain't, ain't nothing to y'all, Bible quotas. Ain't nothing to y'all. Mm. Ain't nothing to you. You just a mess. You just a mess. You want everybody to think like you think. You want everybody to feel. And this is what they'll say to you. Persecuted. Because you want to do better. Because you want to live right. What happens when you in sin and you get persecuted? Mm. When you ain't thinking about doing right, my God. Very seldom do sinners feel like they really being persecuted. It's the church. It's the saints. Them ain't, they ain't worried. Them people that's living on both sides, they not worried. They don't feel abandoned or deserted. But you let something happen to us, the ones that cry out to God on a regular basis. You let something go on in our life and we say, God, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. How many of you be honest and say you told God that? Amen. Amen. God, you said you would never leave me. You said you would never forsake me. Where are you at in this? How many teachers ever talked you through your tests? How many teachers, while you were taking a test in their class, was giving out the answers to the test? 
I don't know no teachers that's walking around just giving easy A's. <laughs> Why? Because you got to learn something. You got to learn something from your persecution. You got to learn how to love your enemy like yourself. You got to learn how to deal with people that are not kind and gentle. And you still got to remain kind and gentle. You still have to be loving and, and, and my God, long suffering and gentle and humble. Oh my God, we don't want to talk about the fruit of the spirit. But if you're going to be a Christian, Christ-like, you gotta, you gotta bear some fruit. And if the tree ain't never pur purged and pruned, and, and, and if the weeds ain't never dug out from around them, stuff will choke you out. This hostility, these ill treatments, this being said, you ain't gonna never be good enough for nothing or nobody. You, you gotta learn how to overcome this stuff and not feel like it's God. Oh my, okay. Good understanding. And on the other side of this, it says favor. Cast down, to hurl, or throw something down. To hurl is to throw an object with great force. We are thrown down in the hands of man. We are thrown down by this world that we live in. We are thrown down by the things that come at our life to challenge the God in us. But if you think about this, and I just want to give you something good to think about with that hurling and that being cast down. When you're in the hands of a part. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And he and he's making a work. When he see that that work got some cracks in it or where there's not, a, a, it's not completed like it needs to be. After he done baked it, he'll break it. He'll throw it down and he'll cause it to be torn all to pieces just for him to put it back together to make a masterpiece. Oh my, my God. somebody ought to my get God. that. Somebody my ought to get that. Sometimes God. we have to be thrown down just so that God brings us back together to make us what he needs us to be because we're blemished. My God. And in the midst of that, it doesn't feel good to the potter to have to do that because he was working and he was satisfied with how he had formed this thing initially or else he would have never put it in the oven to make it. Oh, come on, somebody, and understand that when you're in the hands of a potter and we are in the hands of the master potter, we're in the hands of my mind. No, 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 shy God, I give you glory. We're in the hands of a sovereign God, the omnipotent, the all wise, the all knowing, the all present God. Oh my God. And he, and he has to slam us and he has to break us to get us back to the form that he has been working on us in. Amen. And we 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 want to resist the breaking tim the breaking part of being a vessel of honor you want to be the vessel unto honor well the only way to be that vessel unto honor is to stay in the hands of a master potter sometimes you don't like what your pastor has to say sometimes you won't like when your mentor deals with your stuff but if you want to be made over you just got to deal with the breaking sometimes my god yes Lord. because it's not the heart to destroy you it's not the heart my heart is not to destroy the work but for the work to my god yeah the robot side it's for the get the work to the place where the work now becomes workable I got to get you to a place where, where what used to keep you from being effective, meaning you were what's ineffective, not effective. Now, once you've been broken and you've been slammed and you've been put back together and you've been baked and you've been refined and you've been buffed, now I can use you. And I can get glory. And I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the process that God takes us through so that he can get glory from us. Because he wants to do what? Put an end to the existence of the foolishness that have kept us hostage to sin. Mm -hmm. 
He wants to destroy the things that we keep going back to that keeps us from praying and fasting and worshiping and calling him the great I am. He wants to put an end to that. His goal is not to destroy you. His goal is to destroy the sin that you've allowed to grow up in your life. He wants to put an end to the things that keep you separated from him. And because in my stinking thinking, I'm not understanding that he has decided that I was worth something more than where I was or what I'm doing or how I thought it should be. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. That, that he says, let me stop the sin that's going to keep her from being able to be an effective prophet, to keep her from being an effective witness, to keep her from being able to reach souls for my kingdom. I've got to stop this. And the only way that I can do this is that I break her. Yes, Lord. Brokenness don't feel good. Brokenness has never felt good to anybody. Oh my God. But when you think about a masterpiece, when you think about when God decides that he wants to do something with your life that's grander than you've ever encountered in your life. Oh my God. He'll think about how you used to be a fighter and he will put you in situations where now your temper has to come such. Mm, 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 mm. Oh no, God won't do that. God don't tip nobody. That look, that ain't temptation, baby. That's a test. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith is working something. That's going to be something greater than you understand. You got to figure out how to bring you subject so that all of these things will work together. Because see, He never told you not to be a warrior. When Peter cut that man's ear off, come on, Holy Ghost. Jesus never rebuked Peter for cutting the ear off. He just picked it up and put it back on. Because he knows that some of us are fighters. We'll fight for what we believe. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you don't fight for truth? What if you've always been fighting for the wrong instead of for the right? What if you've always gone over to the side of of fighting an unjust battle instead of fighting for righteousness, fighting for something that's going to be beneficial? Oh, come on, somebody. See, because the Bible says good understanding gives favor, but the way of a transgressor is hard. What am I fighting against? Why am I keep fighting for something that don't want to die? Oh, Lord, Lord. I'm fighting, I'm fighting, and I can't sleep. I'm fighting, and I can't eat. I'm fighting, and I have no governor on my emotions. Mm-hmm. And God is saying, it's, it's time for you to do things a different way. So let me break you. Let me break you from these habits. Let me break you from these things that keep you going back to sin. Have you ever looked at your own self? Because see, this ain't about nobody else. This this message really wasn't for nobody but me. When I started putting it together, I had to look at me. I had to look at my nasty self. I had to look at my nasty temper. I had to look at my nasty thoughts. I had to look at my nasty mind. I had to look at my nasty mouth. I had to look at my nasty hands. I had to look at my nasty feet. And I had to say, what am I doing with this body that God has given me? Am I speaking life? Am I speaking things that be not as though they were and not telling lies? Because, you know, we like the lies, Christians. Mm. Oh, my. Mm. You won't, you won't, you won't amen that because I'm a good Christian and I don't lie. I, 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 I don't say I'm going to call you back and don't never do it. I, I don't say hold on for a minute and I keep you on the line for 30 minutes. Come on, somebody. You don't tell those kind of lies. Oh, that's just a little white lie. But I didn't see no color in that. Yeah. The Bible says for all unrighteousness is sin. 
Lord. Oh, I'm talking to the wrong church. I'm going to give you hope in a minute. I'm going to give you something that's going to excite you in your quiver in a minute. I, I'm, I'm going to give you something that's going to make you say, God, I thank you for enduring hardness as a good soldier. I, I, I'm going to give you something in a minute that's going to say, yeah, he though they slay me, yet will I trust you, God. You're going to come through you already have. Mm, <sighs> amen. Amen. Yes. See, when the enemy starts to fight you, he don't fight you because he ain't got nothing else to do. You belong to him first. We were spirit. Yes, we were spirit. But when we started moving these feet and these hands and these eyes and these whatever we use, <laughs> ah, Holy Ghost, we, we, we yielded these members to Satan. And in us yielding our members to him, he knows what it takes to get us excited. He's not going to bring no light skin, nothing my way to get me excited. Oh, no. Oh, no. If, if I was ever going to act out in my flesh, it had to be darker than, than vanilla. It had to be dark I, I, because I ain't moved by that. I, I, I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about y'all. He knew that if he was going to get me, he had to do something to affect my children. Mm. He knew if he was going to do anything to affect me, he had to affect my relationship. Mm. With who? I ain't talking about with no man. I'm talking about with God. And how he going to do that? Doubt and fear. Doubt and fear. Those are two crippling agents. They'll keep you from walking the way you need to walk with God. You fear. Fear overtakes you. The Bible says, for I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And we operate in fear more than we operate in power, love, and a sound mind. Because we're too busy holding grudges. We oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And God is saying, guess, guess what? That, that get that spirit you got, I'm gonna get you back. I'm gonna get you before you get me. I'm gonna hurt you before you hurt me. Guess what? All you're doing is keeping a fuel for Satan to fire up when he needs to. Just when you decide I'm gonna pray, here goes somebody. Oh, you know what? I heard you was talking about me, and then bam, no more prayer. I'm going to war. Little scrappy, here I come. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> Maybe that ain't it. Maybe they ain't got to say they heard you was talking about, oh, girl, I saw her man and he was fine as all. And then guess what happens? Here you go. Oh, you you better not be talking about my man. That's mine. Blah, blah, blah. And black, black, black. And next thing you know, you scrapping over something that don't even make good sense. <laughs> popping off at your mouth, saying all kind of reckless stuff, ain't brought that mouth in subjection at all. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Feet swift to run the mischief. Let the police light siren come on and everybody scatter like roaches because they got to find out where the police going, who they done got and what's going on. Guess what? Stay still, little feet. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Y'all don't want it. I'm sorry. Listen, good understanding. Good understanding. When I know, when I know what the enemy trying to do to me, when I know that the enemy is trying to keep me away from the things of God, when I know that the enemy is using this to set me up for something that's going to make me have to stay on my face and cry out to God longer than I thought I would or should, let me be broken. God, just break me and make me over again. Yeah. The beautiful part to being broken the right way. <laughs> Listen to me. The difference in a broke glass and a shattered glass is a broke glass can be glued back together. A shattered glass has to be made into a special work. I want to be a special work in the sight of God. 
And that's not going to come without some brokenness, some shattering, some shattering of the way I think about things, the way I see myself in relationship with God, not with people, because I will never be able to love a human being right until I get my love walk right with God. Amen. Amen. I can I can I can love you, but I won't ever love you right. Why? Because I'm always gonna be like a crab in a bucket. I'm always gonna be trying to pull something down so that I can get above it. Love is not self-seeking. Love does not keep account of wrong. Love is not puffed up. Love does not bond itself. Love is not envious. It doesn't murder. Do you know we commit more murdering with our mouth and with our nasty, vile attitudes than we do with guns and knives? Shoot them up, bang, bang. There I said it. Amen. Cause I'll say what I want to say and I won't, I won't give no thought to what you feel until I'm through with, with myself. When I, when I come off my high horse, mm -hmm. yeah. I just want you to feel what I feel. No, you don't, you don't, you don't want to provoke nobody to feel what you feel. You don't want to make nobody feel what you feeling because what you feeling ain't right to start with. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going. I'm going. But good understanding gives favor. The way of a transgressor is hard. And I'd rather have the favor of God on my life where he has broken me from all my own personal foolishness to get me to a place that when I move, I move in a fruitful manner. I want to move in gentleness and joy and peace. Do you know we allow the enemy to rob us of our peace more than anything? We allow him to rob us of our joy more than anything. Mm -hmm. He'll let you walk around with a false sense of humility. Mm -hmm. But when you're home behind them closed doors, how humble are you being? God said, pray, and you fight the spirit so hard. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Somebody, somebody read for me. I, I just need somebody to read for me. I, I messed up right about now. Beloved, I think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to, which is to try you as Though some strange things happen into unto you, but rejoice what's that? in as much in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's Suffering. sufferings, that when his it's glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Thank you. Beloved, think it not strange concerning these fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory, when whose glory, when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. When his glory is revealed. What happened? You, to get you off the mark, to try you, to get you to, to feel like you've been forsaken or abandoned you've been tried but rejoice 
I'm a partaker. I'm a partaker of the suffering of Christ. That means I'm dying. If I come out of this thing right, I'm going to be dead to some stuff. And I'm going to have joy because I died to it and it didn't kill me. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. It didn't kill me to let go of all that stuff that I was holding on to. It didn't kill me to let go of my pride. It didn't kill me to let go of the stubborn. It didn't kill me to let go of idolatry because we got a whole lot of idol gods going on around here. But it ain't going to kill you to let God be God. Amen. 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 Last one. I think this is the last one, and I think this is the one that's really going to do it. I think, I think I'm going to put the icing on the cake, and I think I'm going to put a candle in it, and I'm going to blow it out and say happy birthday to me, and it ain't even my birthday. I'm so serious. Somebody read this for me. Thirty, thirty-three. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye give has peace. And you might have peace. And you might have peace. In the word world ye shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Of good cheer. Be of I good have, cheer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let me let me let me show y'all something real quick. I, I've said this for so 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 long, and I make people so 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 mad. But at this point, <laughs> I am who I am. It said. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Where? In him. In him who? Jesus Christ. In, in, in our Lord, in our Savior. In me you might have peace. But look at this. In the world you shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want to give y'all something to think about. <laughs> and it's right here. It's right here facing you. He said that in me, you might have peace. Well, why he say might? Because some of us won't keep our peace. We got to give people a piece of our mind. <laughs> so you won't keep your peace. <laughs> you got to tell people a piece of what you're thinking. So you won't keep your peace. I got to lay down my salvation. <laughs> and I got to deal with this. So you ain't going to have no peace. But because you in the world. In the world, in the world, in the world, you shall have tribulations. In the world, that means my carnal mind is operating more than the mind of Christ. I'm operating carnally. I'm dealing with things in a carnal mind, not a spiritual mind. And so my carnal mind is trying to keep me in a place where I'm going through more than what I need to go through. But if I contain and maintain the mind of Christ, I will have peace. Okay, okay. You don't have to lay down your walk with God to appease man. You don't have to allow man and their rhythm to throw you out of sync with God. There's a song that says, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. And when you've decided to make Jesus your choice, you might have to worship a little more than what you had. You might have to find time to pray a little more than what you used to. You may have to practice 
reframing from saying things to people as quickly as they say it to you. Uh -huh. You know, there's some people that's quick with it and they say things at the drop of a dime. You say something, they got something they got to answer right at the top of their mouth, just waiting for it. I've been accused of having that kind of quick wit. <laughs> I've been practicing studying to be quiet. There's so much power in study to be quiet so that you don't give the power that God has given you to be a foolish and reckless with your mouth. When you practice allowing God to be the compass that guides you, it's a beautiful thing when you don't feel the need to come outside of your comfort zone with God, to go into a place with the enemy that you don't even need to be in. Some places are just traps. Mm -hmm. So in times like these, hold on tight to what you got with God. In times like these, find your strength and make it make it so that when you know that you know that you know that you know that everything is coming at you and your walk with God and you are persuaded in your own mind that I shall not I shall not be moved I'm like a tree and I'm planted by the water I shall not be moved when your mind is fully made up Amen. Stay steep. See the salvation of the of the Lord and know that the arms of the Lord are not too short that he can't reach you. Hmm. He can reach you. Why? Because he's that kind of God. Amen. And when it looked like you're falling into a bottomless pit, that pit got a bottom because you serve a God that can reach you even in the pit. I pray that tonight something was said to encourage you, to give you hope, to let you know that these things come. Yes, they come. But it ain't what happens with the thing. It's how you grow from it. You can grow in the middle of being mistreated. If you can grow in the middle of being lied on, if you can grow in the middle of persecution, if you can grow in the middle of trouble, if you can grow while you're being cast down, trouble on every side, but not in despair, perplexed, The devil is a liar. I, I, I look, I got it. I can pull it back up. I, I look, my mind ain't my, my I'm feeling something. I'm, I'm in my feelings. Troubled on every side, but not in the distress. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. If you can grow from that. <clears throat> If you can grow while you're going through those times, if you can grow when God is making a work of art with your life, with your ministry, with your health, if he's making a believer out of everything that's happening around you with you, <laughs> then we stand a chance. We stand a chance at being that work. That at the end of the day, God will say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. Yes, I want to hear him say it. We've been told and we've been taught that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I say to you, why not bow now? Why not bow now? Why not make him your choice every day? 
Why not wake up with the, with the mindset that today I'm going to be better for God than I was yesterday. Today, I'm going to walk away from things that separated me from God on yesterday. Today, I'm going to be a light that shine in dark places where yesterday my light was mighty dim. Today, I'm not going to live in hiding, but I'm coming out from among them and I'm going to be separate. I'm not going to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I'm not going to lie to myself that I'm going to be perfect, but I'm striving for perfection. I'm no longer going to wait to everybody else is praying to pray. I'm no longer going to wait for them to tell me what the scripture says, but I'm going to study to show myself approval unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That way, when they come to you and the word ain't right, your Noah will let you know that ain't it. But the reason why you don't know is because you don't study. In times like these, hold on tight. Tie the knot. Tie it. Hold on. Get in his word and let his word get into you. He said, if, mm, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things come new. The reason why we still suffering is because our, our old man still got more power than our new man. And the devil is a liar. The God that I serve is an all-powerful God. So it's not the problem with God. The problem is self. Self-denial. Self right. It's self-denial. I don't want to stop cussing. I don't want to stop having sex. I don't want to stop drinking. I don't want to stop smoking. I don't want to stop going to the club. I don't want to stop doing the bump and grind. I, all the reasons we don't want to stop doing this, that, and the other is not fruitful. Mm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I want the everlasting life. And I want to know that God is pleased in my dying process. I'm not going to get into other stuff because there's so much more I could say but at this time I would love to hear some comments I would love to hear 